The morning after, I always woke happy. I woke up sitting against the wall, legs stretched out on the bed, my thighs aching from the weight of his head that had rested there all night, and aching for its loss in the early morning. Sunlight slowly crept in, soft butter yellow rays that were split by the crude prism of dull green horizontal window bars. The light hit the soft hollow on the bed where his form had lain the night before. I ran my fingers over his absence, trying to imagine his solidity, the hardness of his muscles, the coarseness of his hands, and wondered if the sheets had soaked up his smell, his musk. As more light flowed in, the dull white of my walls were exposed and closed in on me, stifling me with a sense of loss and loneliness magnified by his absence. I walked out, my loose t-shirt of faded yellow lounging over short black shorts, bare essentials to weather the summer heat clinging in places to a thin film of sweat that was already anointing me this early in the day. My home was just that, the room with its bed and desk, leading out to a concrete corridor which felt cold to my bare feet at 7 a.m. There were three other rooms to the right of mine, and a stairway leading down to the road on the left. I walked down, once again shaking my head at how I had managed to carry him up these narrow steps, for, of course, he'd been drunk as he always was when he came to me in the middle of the night. And of course, I had forgiven all and taken him in. What else could I do? What else could I do when hearing his wobbly call around midnight? I hadn't been asleep, hoping that he would come, ears attuned for his footstep before a knock. After a few false alarms of imagined presence, I had just settled in for an uneventful night when his baritone warbled, LAVEO! I had rushed out to the corridor and saw him, his mass of curls wreathing his bull head, shirt barely hugging his massive shoulders, and the rumble of his crooning my name soaked in intoxicating spirits. I had bounded down in an instant to hold his swaying form steady, and he wrapped me in the breadth of his arms, crushing me against him, the hair of his chest prickling me like a horde of fireflies through my cotton shirt. He had kissed me then and his tongue felt to mescent, as though engorged on the whiskey that reeked all over him. In my own sober mouth it tasted electric, sharp tingles that resonated with every part of my teeth, gums, cheeks, and tongue. He kissed me again and again, our tongues drawing life from the fire that he had consumed. He paused, drawn back his face from mine, and said, I love you. His wide face broke out into a groggy smile as he pulled me back in for a kiss, his bristling chin scouring my face a thousand times. I broke up with her, he had whispered. My heart shuddered, as though it had been doused first with ice and then with a scalding steam. This was the usual, a breakup with his girl and, after discovering that drowning in alcohol was not enough to cauterize the pain, he would come to my arms for solace. It happened every three weeks or so and I craved for it, my whole body twitching in anticipation, unheeding to cries from my brain that said I would never be woman enough for him. I had ignored it again last night and taken him to bed, soothing his dreams as he lay on my lap, holding him as he shivered the night sweats, my back cramped, not moving in case I woke him up and he left. I stepped onto the cobbled road, with the morning sun now slowly dialing up the heat, and looked around. There were few people walking. A stray dog ambled by, but there was no sign of him. I stretched out my hands above my head, a flighty tune strumming through my entire being, like after a night of great sex. Though between us it had never been more than the kisses, his denunciation of women and his need for me. The morning after, I always felt satiated, but yearning. As I yawned and turned, I saw the car. Piss yellow and streaked with years of dirt standing by me. On the rear window, etched through the dirt, his scroll read, I'm really drunk, Oveo. And to the side, almost as an afterthought like me. And stupid. I smiled. The heat of the sun filled me to the brim, and I felt a moment of happiness. A sense of completion. If I could have loved him a bit more in that moment, I would have. I walked up to the car and gently traced the air right above his writing. I shook my head and wrote beneath it, Yo tambien, and walked back to my room.